I'm going to show you how to create a user form um, on the Mac using Excel 2011. So why do we want to do this anyway? Well, it's to make a nice interface for our programs. Now, of course, we can have an input box where we type in our input, or we can type directly into the spreadsheet, and we can show our output on the spreadsheet too. But sometimes we want to have a little more sophisticated type of user interface, and for that, the user form is a very nice way to go. So um, in the notes here, I have both the Windows version and the Mac version. This is going to be the Mac version, and I can just um, jump to that. But actually, what I'm going to do, instead of following through these slides, is just to go over into Excel and show you what to do. So here I am with a fresh Excel spreadsheet, and let's see, I'm going to go to the Developer tab and over to the um, Editor. So, come on, Developer, Editor. All right, and here I have my Project window and my Properties window. Now, first of all, let's go to the code for this workbook. I'm just going to set it up by writing option explicit here, which I always do. And now what I want to do is insert a, a user form into my program. So to do that, I can go to insert, and here we see user form. So because I'm in the editor, insert is showing me things that are appropriate for the editor. Okay, user form. And here's my user form. Um, this itself is the blank user form. And this is the toolbox, which shows me the different kinds of uh, controls that I can put onto the user form, like a text box, a list box, a label, etc. Now, over here are the properties of the user form. And in general, uh, whatever I happen to be working with, the properties will show up in this properties window. So this user form is a little small. So what I'm going to do is make it larger by changing the properties. So I'll change the height to be, say, 450. And the width, which is down here, to be, oh, let's make it 600. OK. Now, when I'm working with a form, I like it to have a reasonable name. And I have a naming convention, which you'll learn more about as we go along. But for forms, I like to start the name with FRM. And then I'm going to call it form um, example. And the form also has a caption. Now, you can't see it here, but you'll see it when the program runs. So I wanted to say something other than user form 1. I'll make it say hello. And another property I'd like to change is the color. This is kind of a boring gray right now. Oh, by the way, notice how the toolbox shows up when I'm selected this. When I'm over here doing something else, it goes away. OK, now, the color for the user form is what they're calling the back color here. And what I can do, there's different ways to set the color. Um, there's a box of crayons. There's a color wheel. There are color sliders that you can use, and so on. Color palettes. I kind of like the crayons, so let's pick a yellow crayon. Uh, lemon. Okay. There we go. So I can play around with these properties all I want. But now there's another factor to consider. When I open my workbook here, when I'm working around with it, there's nothing to make the user form show up, and it won't show up unless you make it show up. So what I'm going to do is go into the code for the workbook itself and put in something that will make it show up. Now, I could create a button and make a macro here that's triggered by clicking the button, but I want to do something else. I want to make this show up right away when you open the workbook. And for that, there's a special subroutine called workbook open. So I'm writing that here, open parens, uh, I mean empty. Okay, and now 
to make it show up, I write the name of my form, which is FRM example, dot, and now it's showing me all the things I could put there. What I want is the action, the method called show. All right. So let me save this. And now I'm going to save my workbook as a macro-enabled workbook, obviously. And I'm going to save it on the desktop. And I need a name for it, so let's just call it um, my example. Save. Okay, now let's, um, let's test things out at this point. So I'm going to close the editor and get out of Excel. And let's find the workbook. It's over here. Let's open it. So we're opening Excel. And I want to enable the macros. And there's my form. Now, of course, it doesn't do anything. It just sits there because I haven't put any controls or anything on it yet. But there it is. But I want you to notice something. I can't do anything else in Excel while the form is open. So let's go ahead and close it. And now we can go back to the editor. So let's go to the Developer tab, over to the editor. And let me show you. Now, here's the code that goes with this workbook. And over here in the Project window, if I want to see the form, I can click on this. Now, there's also potentially code associated with the workbook. Uh, sorry, with there isn't any there yet, but there could be. So if I right-click here or Command-click, and go to View Code. Here's a separate code window that will hold the code for this form. Form example. Whereas, there's a different window entirely with the code for this workbook. So this workbook has code, but the form itself will have its own code that's in a separate place. So that's an important thing to remember when you start doing more programming. Okay, next time I'll show you how to put controls on and fun stuff like that.